use our air power. We will train and equip our partners. We will advise and we will assist and will lead a broad coalition of nations who have a stake in this fight. This isn't America versus ISIL. This is the people of that region versus ISIL. It's the world versus ISIL. Wars are rarely ever lost or won in one strike. They take time, intelligence, thought, and a concept of what comes after the first bullet is fired and the last surrender is accepted. Looking at where we are now in the current battle against ISIS, even those military experts who try to stay on the good side of a presidential administration are quietly being forced to admit none of those concepts was or is being used in the fight against ISIS and other terrorists. And the paying for mistakes may already have begun. Let's welcome to Midpoint, retired U.S. Army General, 35 years of service, and five-time recipient of the Bronze Star for Valor, author of the exceptional book, Why We Lost, a general's inside account of the Iraq and Afghanistan wars, Daniel Bolger. General, thank you for your service, and thank you so much for being here. Well, thanks. Thanks, Ed. I'm glad to be here. And this is a really important subject. I mean, it's something every American better be paying attention to. We need to pay attention because now it's coming out of Washington that, indeed, the White House may be realizing they made a mistake. Also, let's look at what U.S. Army General Martin Dempsey, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, said on Thursday in front of Congress, that the U.S. would consider dispatching a modest number of American forces to fight with Iraqi troops as they engage in more complex missions in the campaign against ISIS militants. Is this not, in your opinion, just an admission that we have failed, number one, and number two, if indeed we go in, we have got to go in with the complete and utter thought process of winning this thing and putting the enemy down as quickly as possible? Amen. Absolutely. The U.S. Armed Forces, the great young men and women that make it up, they are, they are trained, recruited, equipped, prepared for short, decisive uh, smashing operations, a high level of violence inflicted to kill the enemy and finish these things and get home. What? And, and in my mind, what we did in the current wars in, in Afghanistan and the, the war, the previous campaign in Iraq, we took that great army that's built to do a desert storm, that great armed forces, the Air Force, Navy, Marines, Coast Guard, everything, and we, we instead used it uh, basically to do another pair of Vietnams. I mean, that's not a good use of American forces. And as you said, can't mess around. We go into these things, we got to go in hard and kill these guys. Now, you wrote about this in the New York Times in an op-ed called The Truth About the Wars, and here's the line that caught me. We did not understand the enemy, a guerrilla network embedded in a quarrelsome, suspicious civilian population. General, I really wasn't an adult at that time. I was a mere child, but I seem to remember the lessons of Vietnam. If you wrote that and talked about the North Vietnamese, that would say exactly what we missed then. So here we are looking back 40 years, and we couldn't learn from this and be prepared for it? That speaks to a tremendous lack of preparation and foolishness, if you will, in the military minds who looked at what we're facing now. And, and, I'm, and I got to tell you, Ed, that's, that's why I also state that I hold myself responsible for that error. And I will tell you, in the military, the commander's for everything, responsible for everything his unit does or fails to do. And we failed to figure out a way to prosecute these wars correctly. And what's worse, we, we actually started them by winning them. We won the first few weeks. We had no plan after that, after we knocked out the uh, Taliban in Kabul and we knocked out Saddam Hussein in Baghdad. After that, we just backed into a village war that looked just like Vietnam in both countries. You also point out the surge in Iraq did not win anything. General, do we need to stop kidding ourselves, stop using words like win until we actually get to the point of winning a war? Hey, Ed, you're exactly right. You go to war, the United States, first of all, the people of the United States got to agree to go to the war. It, it bugs me that the last authorization for use of military force in this country was in October 2002. We need a public debate, a vote from our people in accord with our Constitution, a vote from the Congress signed by the president that sends us to war. How about a declaration of war that names who the enemy is, and then we tell them, hey, we're coming after you until you're dead. And there's no monkeying around with, uh, you know, maybe degrading this, that, or the other. You're going after them. Only got about 30, 40 seconds left. We'll take a break and come back, but I'm going to be blunt. The president is the one that makes the decisions. The buck stops at his or her desk. If indeed we have to go back in with a military force, a large force, and go after the killers and the terrorists, and more Americans die, is that blood on the hands of Barack Obama? To the extent that he's the representative of the American people, yes. But remember, Barack Obama works for us as citizens. We got to take this seriously, and we got to insist that we get it right. And do you think we're ready? The military is ready to do whatever tasks they're given. 
but they got to be given a clear task and backed up until we're finished. All right, General, please stand by. Breaking back more with General Daniel Bolger. We're going to spin where we go next in order to keep from spilling that blood in the Middle Eastern sand. And at 51 minutes after the hour, you are not stupid, no matter what the Obamacare guy says. But you might fit several other words. Telling it like it is is later.